So thanks everyone for joining. Um, today we're, going, we're talking to Chris again. Hi, Chris. Hi, Dave. Chris, we're going to take a slight uh, different direction today. We, we often talk about organisations and employees, obviously, in those organisations and how they relate to inside of risk. But um, one thing we've been having some conversations a lot lately uh, with some other clients of ours, which are in the sort of the education sector and specifically universities, and some of the concerns that they hold uh, in regards to their risk uh, with their students. Um, universities, as we all know, do a lot of research um, and have a lot of information holding in regards to that research. So, Chris, talk to us today about what we're going to be talking about with regards to you know mitigating inside of risks in the university sector. Yeah, thanks, Dave. It's um, we have it's been the last few months we've been approached by a number of universities about this, and there's some real concerns about access to highly valuable research inf information, as we know. And and so today, what we're going to cover is is what are the risks to research, and particularly we're going to talk a little bit about espionage as well. Um, it is it is a it's a bit of a sensitive topic, but it it happens, and and so we're going to cover it off today. Uh, we're going to talk about what are the indicators of espionage in particular and what can we do about it. So we're going to talk about those those few topics there, but um, I guess we just we should start on the risks, Dave, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Maybe maybe talk about what what are the main risks that you're, you're hearing coming back from your discussions with uh, those folk in the university sector. Yeah, okay. So there's a number of risks. So we, we know students within the university sector um, there's a number, you know, they'll get access, um, and one of the the issues in in the university sector in particular, I guess, is uh, in the the research area. There's often shadow IT, so it's sort of outside of the IT area, although somewhat connected sometimes. And so there's the danger of, firstly, inadvertent access, and we say that a lot in in the corporate world, don't we, Dave? Um, <laughs> but you know, students accidentally getting access or looking for something and getting access to some material that they maybe they should or shouldn't have access to. Um, we talked about deliberate espionage, and we're going to cover that off a little bit more in in a sec. But but it is a it is a factor. You know, a, a student, um, and particularly international students coming into Australian universities. Uh, in, uh, registering for a semester or a, a particular course, getting access uh, to university systems and then trying to propagate and sort of proliferate throughout the organisation. Um, you know, we, we, we'll talk about controls uh, and so forth in a second, but, you know, things like access controls and data classification is is a is a key, um, uh, key controls. But also when things are detected, and we'll talk, we're going to talk about that in a second. When things are detected, what do you do about it? And how do you detect it? You know, those sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. Are we seeing that there's much monitoring in place in the university uh, universities to safeguard themselves from this sort of un inadvertent access that you talk about? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Uh, I think that's the key question, isn't it? So we're, we're not. Uh, and that, that's one of the problems, that there it's perceived that there's – uh, that this is a an insurmountable problem to to monitor for, and also there's a bit of a uh, a focus on you know we shouldn't be monitoring students we, we we shouldn't be doing these things but I guess that's that's counter to to what a lot of uh, what we're hearing says is that absolutely monitoring and trying to protect research material and so forth is is really key um, and and I guess we should probably talk about some of the motivations behind what we see as, as espionage? Yeah, look, it's probably a good segue into the, I think, what is the key element here, which is around the espionage side of things. Um, mm -hmm. So talk to me about that, Chris. What, what exactly is espionage and why is it mm -hmm. a concern to universities? So espionage can cover two broad areas. Where, where we see espionage is typically state-sponsored espionage. But we also see corporate espionage, where, and we've seen that Dave in our lot in the corporate world, where, where one organisation who's developing something will plant people or try and get access to uh, information, technical information in other organisations. But specifically in the university sector, we see state-sponsored espionage, and and the motivations for that are that there there's four or five key 
motivators for it. And one is, the first is financial gain. And often it's about money, right? Where the state um, uh, would tend to uh, gain revenue from really highly valuable research, but also the the, the the agent, if you like, that student who's acting in that 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 role, might be offered financial uh, support themselves. Now that that's one one issue. Another key one is that those ideological loyalties. So I am loyal to my country. We all are. I think you know I I I, I come to Australia. I'm doing a course on, let's say, artificial intelligence, and I get approached by. Uh, a uh, an agency, an intelligence agency from my country, saying, "Hey, you, you're doing some work here," and they leverage that those ideological loyalties to your country, and convince you to, "Hey, let, let's just for our country, let's let's get some of those um, some of that technical information out as well." It can also be that uh, academic recognition, so um, either. You know, and, and and plagiarism comes into this a little bit as well. But but to be seen in your country as being that that person who you know, uh, you know, was leading in that space and so forth. But maybe you're you're leaking that in information or stealing that information uh, to do it. But there's also that dark side of espionage, which is uh, coercion, and that can be either because you've got family at home. It may well be because you're threatened with certain things will happen if if you don't assist the state. And typically, you know, we detail those one by one, but typically it's a combination of those things. There's some financial gain, which might lead to then some coercion, and let, you know, with an overarching uh, layer of this ideological loyalties to, you know, to your nation. Sure, sure. And what, um, you know, if you're the... Uh person there who's tasked to keep an eye on this at the universities, what would be some of the indicators that you might be looking out for that might alert you to this sort of activity, do you think? Yeah, uh, so you, you touched on that before, and I think monitoring is, is one of the key ones, right? So when when you are monitoring, what do you actually look for? And, you know, to some degree, you, you start to look for um, unusual patterns. So we know a person should be accessing this particular data. We know they should be going to certain areas. Hang on, we're seeing them try and uh, um, upgrade their access to certain areas. We're seeing them go to outside of their departments where they where they need not. Um, and that's all unusual um, activity. Um, and we start to see, um, you know, uh, sometimes uh, suspicious communications. We see. Uh, particularly large data sets uh, moving and that sort of thing, which which is which is um, unusual. And then we get into that personal side of things. We get into that almost behavioural where where we we start to see a particular person try to recruit others. So it might be I'm in the I might be in um, the do, doing a, a course in legal, uh, and I see so. So, uh, that person trying to recruit or befriend other people in other departments within the university. Now, that might not, you, you know, again, you need to get into the head of these people and monitoring, as, as we know, Dave, isn't a siloed activity. It is taking a number of events and t- contextual, um, you know, that type of type of behaviours and, and putting those together and, and helping us to understand exactly what the potential motivators might be. Um, but we we often see um, you know unexplained wealth behaviour changes in in uh, in in people and those are all indicators of hey something might be going on here that we probably prefer not to happen. What other things, Chris, do you think in that space universities could do to to help protect themselves? There's a couple of things here. So one is when we start, and I talked about shadow IT before. One of the things is to start to measure and monitor exactly what's happening in that space. So um, it, it's t- typically, you know, if someone gets a research grant and they will build up their own um, IT environment, sort of half connected to the university, sometimes not. Um, but to be able to monitor these areas is is key. Um, understanding what the vulnerabilities are in that uh, in those environments, understanding where someone might leverage and compromise those environments. 
but also as we talked about monitoring is key monitoring activity to get to gain a theme understand what the baseline of activity is and start to see where might things be a little bit different here okay if we talk about um some of the unauthorized access that we've seen occur at universities in our conversations and, and work that we've done with them over the years what are some of the types of sort of unauthorized access or yep. activity chris that you can share with us today yeah, there's a, there's a couple, and, and, and some of it is quite typical. It, it may be an international student, um, they register for one semester or one course, um, they immediately start to, to befriend researchers and, and sometimes outside their departments and so forth, as, as I mentioned. And we then see uh, often large data holdings being either copied, moved, um you know uh to, to dropbox or to offshore and so forth i mean it plays out in, in a typical pattern and dave as we know i mean when we're monitoring for this sort of material you know we know we know what to look for there are some real real key indicators that it that it show real heightened uh risk in certain activity but unless you start to look for this uh, this type of activity um, unless you, you're in our space, you, you wouldn't really know what to look for, but but they are key, and we obviously can provide guidance in that that sort of activity as well. Yeah. It actually reminds me, Chris, of another article in there um, and a video actually we did recently, which was around um, what you measure, you manage, because the two yeah. very much are connected. You know, uh, unless you're, uh, you know, measuring what's happening in your environment, you're not going to be able to manage it. So, Good on the yep. universities for actually identifying what their risks are and mm -hmm. calling that out and sharing it, certainly with us, to be able to manage that going forward. And they're doing that with, with a great deal of success, I might add. Mm -hmm. So thanks, Chris. Um, again, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Check us out. Um, please hit the like button if you uh, enjoyed this video and please subscribe to get future uh, videos when they come out and also hit the alert icon to be notified when we release a new video, which we do each week. Thanks again, Chris, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, Dave.